Donkey Kong. Women want him, men want to be him. But few understand him. Who is Donkey Kong? How did he become the ape he is today? Hi, I'm Robert Kongman, and today I'm going to tell you the story of Kong. In order to understand modern-day Donkey Kong, one must first understand his grandfather. As I'm sure many of you are already aware, the original Donkey Kong, appearing in the classic arcade hit Donkey Kong, was not in fact modern-day Donkey Kong, but rather his grandfather, who is better known today as Cranky Kong. Cranky Kong, whom I will be referring to from this point onwards as Donkey Kong the First, actually began his adventure long before this arcade classic. Allow me to take you back in time to 2006, when Nintendo released a title for the Nintendo DS titled Yoshi's Island DS. Now you may be asking, Robert, what does Yoshi's Island DS have to do with this beautiful ape here? And to, I just, shut, just let me talk for a second. Yoshi's Island DS served as a sequel to the popular Yoshi's Island released years earlier on the Nintendo Entertainment System Super, the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Expanding on the gameplay of the original, Yoshi's Island DS featured five selectable babies as opposed to the one in the original game. In addition to the popular Baby Mario, we received Baby Peach, Baby Wario, Baby Bowser, and of course, Baby Donkey Kong. Now hold on a minute, you may be saying. Baby Donkey Kong? Why, that doesn't make much sense at all, does it? Considering the fact that this Baby Donkey Kong here was an infant at the same time as Baby Mario, we can come to only one conclusion. The Baby Donkey Kong featured in Yoshi's Island DS is not modern day Donkey Kong, but rather Donkey Kong the first. Though not a real animal, Kongs are based on real-life animals. Donkey Kong in particular is based on a gorilla. Gorillas live, on average, between 35 and 40 years. Much shorter, mind you, than the average lifespan of a human being. If we take that into consideration, one may assume that Kongs age much more quickly than your average human being. So if Mario and Donkey Kong the first were both infants at the same time, that would make them the same age. Now judging by the fact that Donkey Kong the first appears to be a fully grown gorilla, by the time he meets Mario again in the arcade game Donkey Kong... Donkey Kong, we can assume that both of them are around the age of 20, I would say. By his early 20s, Donkey Kong the first would have been a middle-aged man, and Mario would have been a young man. This fits perfectly with their characterization in the Donkey Kong video game. Not long after the original Donkey Kong arcade game, a sequel was born in the form of Donkey Kong Jr. In Donkey Kong Jr., a new Kong was thrown into the mix, being Donkey Kong Jr. <laughs> so it seems that Donkey Kong the first had a son, but with whom? As far as I'm aware, making a baby Kong would require two grown-up Kongs to do the thing. As it turns out, years later in Donkey Kong Country 2, we would eventually meet modern-day Donkey Kong's grandmother, but more on her in a bit. So anyway, Donkey Kong Jr. eventually bested Mario, rescued his father, and then, at some point, had a son of his own. Not long after that, however, disaster struck. Explosions could be heard in the distance. Screaming Kongs running to their barrel jets, fleeing from the burning apocalypse that they were leaving behind them. I am, of course, talking about the Great Ape War. Not much is known about this horrific event, but we do know it did happen. I'm, I'm not making it. Go look it up. It's, it's a thing. The Great Ape War happened. In Donkey Kong Country, there was one very peculiar enemy that stood out among the Kremlin ranks. This, of course, was the Mankey Kong. 
Unlike the other reptilian and insectoid enemies Donkey Kong III faced in that perilous journey, Mankey Kongs were fellow Kongs. However, they were on the opposite side. Thanks to proper documentation, we do know the story behind these creatures. Unfortunately, the tides of war were not in favor of the Primate Alliance. According to historic texts, large amounts of the Primate Alliance began questioning whether they could actually win this war, thus resulting in a Mankey Rebellion. These Mankey Kongs, who had betrayed the Primate Alliance, were forever cast out as Kong family rejects. Now, where does Donkey Kong Jr. tie into this horrific war? Well, we don't have any official documentation on it, but I've got a theory of my own. The modern-day Kong family is clearly very close with one another. They're always helping each other out, inviting each other to their birthday parties, going climbing in the jungle. They're, they're friends. They're all good friends. But where's modern-day Donkey Kong's father, a.k.a. Donkey Kong Jr.? Where is he? The only time he's been seen along with his son was in a non-canonical appearance in Mario Tennis, but that game also had... Mario alongside his younger counterpart, so it doesn't, no one cares about, that game's not canon, no, just put that out, put it out, get it out of here. What I'm trying to say is it doesn't seem very likely that Donkey Kong Jr. would want to be absent in his son's life. Unless, of course, something prevented him from being a part of his son's life. What could that something be? Well, I think it might just be the Great Eight War. My theory is that Donkey Kong Jr. was drafted into the Great Ape War to defend Donkey Kong Island, but unfortunately, didn't make it out alive. There is perhaps a slim sliver of hope that Donkey Kong Jr. survived. In an old advertisement for Donkey Kong Land for the Game Boy, there was a mysterious Kong lurking in the shadows. This Kong looks almost identical to modern-day Donkey Kong, Though, instead of a red tie, he wears a very fashionable and lady-attracting fedora. Who is this Kong? Where did he go? Where did he come from? Well, the disappearance of Donkey Kong Jr. and the fact that this mysterious Kong looks suspiciously like modern-day Donkey Kong could perhaps mean that Fedora Kong is Donkey Kong Jr. Perhaps the horrors of war were too much and he could not return home to his family. It's very possible that he came down with a severe case of PBSD and could not return home due to the constant screaming nightmares. Post-banana stress disorder is a real illness that affects many Kongs that were involved in this war. Its effects can still be seen in the modern era of Donkey Kong, even as far as the Mushroom Kingdom. In Super Mario RPG, there were enemies known as Chained Kongs, escaped POWs of the Great Ape War, now roaming the jungle, still tied to their chains, suffering, suffering the effects of PBSD and hostile to Mario and his friends because they've lost their goddamn minds. One might even... I can't even say... One might even say that... What? One might even say they've got... They've gone bananas. <laughs> it's very possible that Donkey Kong Jr. too was affected by this horrible disease. Perhaps he thought he was in no condition to raise a child, and decided to don a fedora, change his persona, and leave home forever. Perhaps he decided to take up a life of atheism and posting on image boards. Whether Donkey Kong Jr. died in the Great Ape War, or ran away and changed his persona forever. Modern day Donkey Kong was left all alone to be raised by his grandfather and grandmother. What happened to Donkey Kong Jr.'s wife? Modern day Donkey Kong's mother? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Who cares? Unfortunately, there's one more sad event before we reach the modern era of Donkey Kong. The death of Donkey Kong III's grandmother. At some point between the events of Donkey Kong Country 3 and Donkey Kong 64, Wrinkly Kong passed away. We don't know how this happened, but seeing as she liked to do yoga and 
read library books. It's it's very possible that she injured herself in some strange yoga accident that she was reading about. Either that, or she died of old age. Wrinkly Kong still shows up, however, sometimes as a ghost to participate in barrel races and to give advice to Kongs who need it. I, I, f I just, I feel bad for Donkey Kong and his grandfather. It just feels like it would be like a constant reminder of her death. If she kept showing up as a ghost, they probably want to move on. They probably want to move on with their lives and she, they can't because she keeps coming back. It's a fate worse than death, I think. But anyway, that finally brings us to modern day Donkey Kong. This glorious bastard right here, Donkey Kong the Third. Modern day Donkey Kong first appeared in Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System, in which he had to retrieve his stolen banana hoard from the evil, tyrannical King K. Rule and his Kremlin cronies club. But Donkey Kong is rarely seen these days without his nephew Diddy Kong, except in Mario Kart 8, because for some reason they believe maybe we should have fucking four baby Marios in the game rather than fucking Diddy Kong. But Diddy Kong's existence alone suggests the fact that perhaps Donkey Kong has a brother or sister of his own. Though we don't truly know the identity of this mystery Kong, many people theorize that Donkey Kong's brother may in fact be Funky Kong, or perhaps Swanky Kong, for both of them share very similar appearances to modern day Donkey Kong. But those are just theories. Kong theories. Diddy Kong brought his own friends along to the party. Dixie Kong, Diddy Kong's girlfriend, first appeared in Donkey Kong Country 2 alongside Diddy Kong, who first appeared in Donkey Kong Country 1, but they teamed up in Donkey Kong Country 2 to rescue Donkey Kong from uh, Captain K. Rule, who is just King K. Rule in a different clothes. King K. Rule's kind of a fucking crazy person. Dixie Kong has a family of her own, however, suggesting that there's more than one major Kong family living on Donkey Kong Island. Dixie Kong's sister, Tiny Kong, first appeared in Donkey Kong 64 for the Nintendo 64. Ever since then, she's received quite a redesign and she's become a little, a little risque. Not sure if I like this Tiny Kong. Maybe you should put on more clothes. I, I don't know. It just seems a little inappropriate. Tiny and Dixie Kong have relatives of their own, however. Kitty Kong, who first appeared in Donkey Kong Country 3, is their cousin. And Kitty Kong's big brother would be Chunky Kong, who first appeared in Donkey Kong 64. Speaking of Kongs who first appeared in Donkey Kong 64, that leads us to another strange Kong. Now, who is Lanky Kong? Not only is Lanky Kong not related to any other existing Kongs, but he doesn't even appear remotely similar to any of them either. Who is he? As it turns out, Lanky Kong shares long limbs and a similar name to the Mankey Kongs, the rebellious scum from the Great Ape War. Perhaps Lanky Kong was one of them? Perhaps he was forgiven? We'll never know. But Lanky Kong is perhaps the greatest mystery in the entire Kong mythos. Speaking of other Kongs not yet mentioned who appeared in Donkey Kong 64, there would be Candy Kong, who first appeared in Donkey Kong Country 1 as the manager of the Save Barrel Emporium. Now Candy Kong has been described as being modern day Donkey Kong's girlfriend. So perhaps her and modern day Donkey Kong will, will have a Donkey Kong the fourth someday. But, there is a potential scandal involved here. Candy Kong has not made an appearance in a video game in quite some time, excluding her trophy in the recent Super Smash Bros. for Wii U. Her most curious absence, however, was in Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, where Donkey Kong, modern day, mind you, was celebrating his birthday. Now, all of his immediate family, of course, came, Cranky Kong, his grandfather. Um, his fa his own father couldn't come because he's he's most likely dead or missing. Um, his mother is who, who knows. His grandmother's dead. Her ghost didn't show up, but his grandmother's dead. Um, his brother or sister, who knows where they were. Um, his nephew showed up. 
His nephew's girlfriend showed up, which is honestly kind of strange. But Candy didn't. Now isn't Candy supposed to be Donkey Kong's girlfriend? Now what could possibly be more important to Candy Kong than her own boyfriend's birthday party? If you combine this with the fact that Candy Kong's trophy in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U mentions the fact that she catches the attention of male Kongs such as Funky Kong and Donkey Kong, and Funky Kong's absence in Mario Kart 8, perhaps Funky Kong and Candy Kong have run off together. Maybe. But that pretty much covers it for all of the major Kongs in today's modern Donkey Kong universe. Or does it? Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, originally released for the Nintendo GameCube with a Congo Bongo Bongo ter- peripheral where you slap on the bongo. It was quite fun. Um, that featured several more Kongs, which were quite strange creatures. The Kongs featured in Donkey Kong Jungle Beat were not friendly at all. They were quite evil. Sumo Kong, Karate Kong, uh, I don't, I don't actually have a list of them. I remember those two. Cactus Kong. They're, were they all named after fighting styles? I can see them in my head. There, maybe there was Judo Kong? Dread, Dread Kong. Dreadlocks Kong. There were a bunch of bad Kongs in that game. I don't know where they fit in, guys. I really don't feel like talking about them. Just... I think they were good at the end. Didn't they clap with them at the credits? I don't know. Look it up. I don't. I don't care about those guys. That was a really good game, but I don't care about those ones. Just they don't. They don't. They don't fit. So today we've discussed Donkey Kong's origins, his family, his extended family, the Great Ape War, the potential scandals in Donkey Kong's life with his relationships, his loved ones, his deceased loved ones. But there's one topic we've yet to really touch on. The Kremlings. Led by King K. Rool, the Kremlings are the major threat to Donkey Kong Island, mainly consisting of an army of crocodiles, alligators, bees, beavers, um... There was coats, flying coats, jackets, in like... They'd laugh and throw barrels at you. A constant threat to Donkey Kong Island. Up until recently. Back in the SNES and N64 days, you could hardly keep King K. Rule away from Donkey Kong's banana horde. And that is not a sexual euphemism. Or is it? But in the recent years, King K. Rule has been mysteriously absent from Donkey Kong Island. Where has he gone? Well, I wouldn't worry. I've got a theory about that one as well. King K. Rule's last in-game appearance was in Mario Super Sluggers. In Mario Super Sluggers, compatibility played a very large role in selecting your team. Characters who were not friendly with one another would oftentimes have difficulty making successful passes, etc. Et they didn't play well together. As you'd expect, characters such as Donkey Kong and King K. Rule didn't get along, Mario and Bowser, but there was one very curious pairing there. Bowser and King K. Rule don't like one another. Now why would this be? Whatever the reason for their unfavorable relationship, I believe this may be the key to King K. Rule's disappearance. Consider the following. Bowser dislikes King K. Rule for whatever reason. Bowser has a gigantic spiked club in this game. The two of them are currently on a remote island comprised entirely of baseball parks where no one can hear you scream. My theory is that Bowser couldn't take it anymore. He took his baseball bat, crept up behind King K. Rool, and smashed his skull, and then buried the body underneath home plate. And no one would ever find out. Prove it didn't happen. You can't. Donkey Kong perhaps has the deepest lore and most interesting mythos of any fictional work ever created by human beings. 
It's very difficult to find a story as heart-wrenching and exciting and thrilling as Donkey Kong's. My name is Robert Kong. Thank you for joining me on my journey. And as always, have have a banana go bananas. Fuck it. This was the dumbest thing I've ever fucking done in my life.